Hey guys, welcome back. And today I'm gonna to talk a little bit about life after the hand of Aoife so far. So let's just jump right into the video. Okay, so this is just a little disclaimer for the ones that like to be all up in the comments, making it sound like this is something that I'm saying is going to be for everyone. Uh, this is just my personal experience of how so far what's going on with me and life after the actual hand of Aoife. So, so far you guys, I do want to share that so far what's been going on since I received my hand of Aoife. Let's see, I want to just touch bases on what actually happened during the last day of the ceremony. Um, I was in a room and we had like 11 people that were getting initiated or that were getting their hand of Aoife. They don't really call this the official initiation because it's not where you're actually receiving an Orisha. You are actually like getting it into your Ori. This is not that. This is not Ocha. So some say that this is not even an initiation. This is just an introductory to Aoife where you're actually able to just communicate with the Orishas and give them offers um, on a more, more personal level for the ones that you do receive in terms of being able to interact with. Um, it's very complicated for those that are not really aware of it. But um, during the last day of the ceremony, I literally experienced something. I didn't really go all off into details about it, but I did have an experience. And later on, when I was talking to one of the Baba Laos, my, um, one of my Baba Laos, my first Baba, um, he shared with me that that was because they were trying to keep, um, keep me from being mounted. So as I was standing in the room, there was several of us, um, several people receiving a ceremony. I mean, you know, participating in a ceremony. And as I was standing there, I felt like a warmth sensation come over me. And I started to weep because I was in so much joy um, because I really felt a presence. And I really didn't feel like I was I kind of, I was a little nervous trying, not nerve. I can't even explain it, guys. I, I just noticed that I didn't feel like myself. I felt something different. I'll just say that. I won't try to explain it. I just felt something different. And as I was, um, after that, I sat on the floor and I was weeping. And one of the grandfather, Baba Laos, I, I call him grandfather because we have our actual uh, padrino that we're up under in the Ile. And then I guess it's like a group of Babalaos. And so this particular one, he came up to me. I had my eyes closed and he literally took maybe his thumb or his finger and pressed really hard down right here. Um, and I was told that that was to keep the Orisha from coming. Because if the Orisha came and I was mounted, but to keep things from escalating to another level where they would have to do a whole nother ceremony, then they, the uh, Bible Lao had to do that to keep my spirit to be calm and at peace because I was very well shaken up um, during that experience, I was shaken up and it was a beautiful f feeling. It's tradition for them to go to the, to the next phase and the next phase would have been to go and do Ocha, which meant they would have had to go out and run and buy all these different things or prepare for that particular ceremony of me being able to actually fulfill the whole you know, like the, 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 the big initiation where you get the big chop of the hair and stuff. And so that's, that's what happened that second, that last day. And then, um, for me and my significant, so for my significant other, he has a totally different experience than what I 
am having right now, but then it's somewhat of the same. Um, so I do notice that you got to be very careful when you go to your actual shrine or when you go to your Orishas and you actually request things because those things may come into fruition. And it's best to not go and be in the presence of your actual Orishas if you are angry or if you're arguing, it's even best not to even argue when you are, you know, wearing elekes and and being in the presence of your rishas. Um, and some stuff has jumped off, I should say. Um, not not good stuff. Some stuff has jumped off. We are still together, me and my significant other, but um, some stuff has jumped off, and I think that. You know, I was forewarned about some situations um, in a dream, you know, and um, just our personal experiences, you know, have been a little challenging with things that are coming up in our life. You know, I was told a lot of great things in my actual reading at the end, and I see those things coming into fruition. It's just that... Um, you got to take the good with the bad. And I, I didn't hear all good things, you know. And I just want to say that when you make the step to get closer to source and you begin to get connected with, um, you know, Orishas into this tradition, there's a lot of things that can start to switch the game up. And it's not always for the bad, you know. Sometimes things are switched up for you to recognize the healthier route to go about certain situations. And so I can definitely say that, you know, it's a work in progress. Um, I do want to say that it took us a while to actually connect with our godparents again. Um, they were constantly doing big ceremonies down there in Texas, um, where they had to constantly, you know, like initiate people, people were, but there wasn't anyone for us to actually be led to, to, to help us understand how to take care of our Orishas. And a lot of things you don't really know until you are actually up under godparents. That's how this works. I know it sounds like, well, why would you want to get involved in something like that? It's because with everything, you do things in moderation. So you don't want to get so much information to where you just are oblivious to how to go about it. And so with all that being said, it's just now we've actually had a chance to connect. It's certain things we still don't know that I would like to learn. But... Um, I just don't really like how things are going when, when, when it comes to the godparents. I would like to know more, you know, and so I'm finding myself reaching out to Baba Ef Ifa, Baba Joseph. If you guys aren't familiar with his channel, I'm going to leave the link in the description box down below so that you guys can go over to his channel and check out some of his videos about the Orishas. He's a Baba. So I've actually reached out to him. I'm going to do a consultation with him about a few things because I do like his style of teaching. Now his style of teaching is very unique. Um, he just gets right to the point. He gives you the basic knowledge that you need to understand what's going on. But then you still would have to know how to properly approach certain things in this tradition. And that's only something that you can learn if you connect with the godparent. And so I'm also learning that in life, there's things that, you know, come up as they should. And then there's something that you do called um, an Ebo. And then if you do an Ebo, once you get a reading, if there is an Ebo, an Ebo, then you go and you do an Ebo. And that basically is a prescription for the actual situation. I won't go into details about what that could consist of, 
but there's offers that you can give to the Orishas during the Ebo and things of that nature. And so right now I'm in the, in the midst of knowing that I need to do an Ebo for a specific situation. And the Ebos, they are, they can be big or they can be small, but they're there. And um, this is part of the secrets, you know, you don't know certain things until you actually, you know, take the baby steps. But the thing about it is at least you have these things that you can connect with to make things better for you in your life. And so I'm happy that once, you know, I, I got a chance to learn this knowledge, I get a chance to adapt it to my life and apply it to my life. So that it can work out for my greater good. Because at the end of the day, it's just such as life. So, so far, so good. Um, I'm actually in the process of looking for a new place to move. We were going to move to Texas, but I got a great job offer, which is like a career. So, I'm in school to be a psychologist. Um, I plan on going back to school this fall, this coming fall, which is actually now. <laughs> um, but I do still have a few things I need to take care of before I can start school. So if I don't get a chance to make my actual goal with going back to school this fall, it'll be in the winter and, you know, after the New Year's and stuff. Um, and so with this job offer, I am a QBHS, Qualified Behavior Health. Uh, specialist and I get to work with an actual psychotherapist clinician and what they basically are doing what they do I'll pretty much be making sure that the client is following the proper steps to accomplish whatever type of plan they came up with and I'll also do a plan with them on our on my own to kind of help piggyback off of the clinicians if that makes sense so it's kind of to me like a paid internship. Um, so I'm very happy about that. So I do that two days a week and then at the same company, it's a wellness center. And then I also do Reiki three days a week there. So I work five days a week. So this whole combination of what I'm doing in the same wellness center is phenomenal because it's actually leading me to my ultimate goal so I'm actually able to work with a clinician, psychotherapist in my line of work, in addition to Reiki as a treatment plan for people that come to this wellness center. Now, I can also get people to just come to do the Reiki if they just wanna have Reiki for whatever, you know, as a healing modality or a relaxation technique. Um, so I can have them come there and then they don't have to go through the actual wellness center. They can just see me at the med center. And so that's really great. Um, and I'm very happy about those things. I'm still doing my yoga and I'm incorporating that into the yoga. And so the reason why I spoke about that is because this is my life after the actual hand of Aoife. And I was blessed to receive this job offer, this career offer, after I got my hand of Aoife. And I feel like that was something that they blessed me with. They allowed me to walk into something that I have been praying about. And I am really happy about that because it actually puts me in a really good position to set me up for success for what I really want to do in the future as a psychologist. So I'm very happy about that. Um, when you talk about Reiki, you don't just talk about just holistic healing because with Reiki comes talk therapy as well. So it's kind of like a combination. So that's really good. Um, so that's that with that moving um, because I do want to move I've been in my current house for over 10 years now and I do want to move so I'm very happy about moving to a whole new location and um, starting back school and doing a whole bunch of things that I really want to do um, but for the most part you know I just wish I could connect with my godparents more because I do want to put myself in a position to learn. But that's why I'm connecting with Baba Ifa Joseph. So I can get a chance to learn from him. And I do want to say that a lot of times when you 
are well when you're in this tradition i guess it does may it does it, it would do you some good if you can actually get a chance to see what type of people you're dealing with and when i first met my godmother i felt like oh my god this woman is so knowledgeable she's just so in a little bit of conversation that we had we were able to really learn a lot from her and um, i was and that's why I chose to go down that route when she told me that they were doing a big, huge hand of Aoife thing and invited me to come down. And it just so happens that now she's busy. So I'm hoping that is really the case. And I was on FaceTime with her and she showed me um, a little bit of what was going on and I was able to see that. And it brought tears to my eyes because it was just such a beautiful, it's just so nice to see that. Um, she showed me the drumming ceremony. She showed me one of the young ladies who got the hand of Aoife with me because um, it was 11 of us. Well, I made number 11, so. So it was about a total of 12. I mean, no, it was about 10 outside of myself. And so I was able to see someone that I was down there with and she showed me she had just made Ocha. So I was on FaceTime with her and I, I spoke to her and her daughter and I said hi and it was a beautiful experience. I saw how they had everything set up and I was just like, wow, you have been busy because she wanted to explain to me she's been really busy. But it's just that we got our hand of Aoife, my boyfriend and I, we got our hand of Aoife and it's like we literally didn't really know how to care for them after i mean of course we learned along the way up until this point we've learned what we were doing we, we were able to study on our own and stuff like that um and we just want to make sure we're doing it right because we want to be able to receive everything we're asking for if we can and i just don't want to have any mishaps um so yeah that's pretty much what it is i'm a little I don't know, my spirit is a little down right now because maybe my cycle is coming, but today today has been an up and down day. It's some stuff going on that I really can't talk about, um, but for the most part, everything is still pressing its way. It's still really pressing its way to be okay, and I'm very happy that everything is still pressing its way to be okay, and so tomorrow, you guys are going to be able to hear from my significant other. I hate the word boyfriend and we're we're taking our time before we just get married we're not rushing but um you're gonna hear from him and his experience and how things are turning out for him and working out for him um after the hand of Aoife um it's a life-changing thing you know and so when there's a life-changing things going on you gotta take the good with the bad so yeah And a lot of times it's not it's not so important to share details of everything that that's going on or that you want to share um, because there's a lot of people with different opinions and there's a lot of people that could cause confusion for someone who's trying to better themselves and understand and make sense of things so for the sake of that I won't disclose every little detail of the situations that have been going on after the hand of Aoife, but I do want to say anytime that you are doing something spiritual, there are some trials and tribulations that can come about in your life. And the best thing to do is just to remain calm and just to be more equipped and just prepare yourself for the process because... You have your guides, you have your guardians, you have your agoons, egoons, ancestors. And when you have forces of, of such, they're going to make sure that all things work out and all things in moderation, all things fit, you know, unfold beautifully if they, as much as they can. So for anyone out there that, out there that is interested in receiving your hand of Aoife, I definitely recommend that you make sure that you take your time and get to know the actual godparents, know how they move so that you won't have any sudden mishaps and you won't feel like they left you for dead and you won't feel a certain type of way. I was able to talk with my godmother and my godfather, Padrino, and I think I'm saying it right, Madrina, if I'm saying it right. 
I don't speak Spanish, so I don't really know what I'm saying. I just know that that's what they call it. Um, so I talked to them and they explained everything they were doing and I definitely get that. But I just wanted to learn more when I got here. I wanted to get everything set up. And the fact that, you know, we, we talked for a minute and we still haven't been able to nail down a date to where we can actually move you know move forward and learn some stuff even though i know i'm not initiated with the big ocha it's like you still want to learn these things you that those things are still important so don't ignore the fact that you have someone that's a scholar and that wants to learn so yeah you guys have a great night um about to get ready for dinner here i made a pot roast for dinner tonight so I can take some to work tomorrow for leftovers. I'm so tired of eating out every single time at lunch. So I do want to be able to heat up some home cooked meal um, at work and just enjoy my lunch. All right, you guys, peace, love, and blessings, gods and goddesses, moons and suns. Moon represents feminine energy and sun represents masculine energy, right? Mm -hmm.